What? Why are you so surprised by the title? It hasn't been that long since I last did a Jumpstart game. Let me check, how long has it been? Ah, uh, yeah, that's been a while. Let's fix that. So yeah, it's been a long time since we've last checked out the Jumpstart series, and that isn't entirely unintentional. I've heard people ask if I hated Mission EarthQuest so much that it scared me away, and the answer is... maybe just a little. But no, there's one Jumpstart Adventures game I haven't gotten to yet. If you remember my video on 4th Grade Haunted Island, I was planning to review a version of 4th Grade that I remembered playing as a kid. But the version I was familiar with wasn't actually the original. Jumpstart 4th Grade Haunted Island came out in 1996. It was an educational game like all the others in the series, but with a spooky horror theme. Some children were utterly terrified by it. And no one really knows why, but in 1999 it was retired and replaced with a different game called Sapphire Falls. So that's why I had this version growing up. Nothing was ever confirmed, but it's widely believed that Haunted Island was replaced for being too scary for kids. While this could be true, when we checked it out, we found that it was really hard in some areas, especially if you were playing the version without the map. Maybe they just wanted to release an easier game. But even if that was the case, I found Joe Hammett and Mission EarthQuest to be significantly harder than Haunted Island. But those were for older grades, so maybe the developers thought the kids could handle it. But that aside, there's one very specific factor that's been keeping me from reviewing Sapphire Falls. And no, it isn't Mission EarthQuest. Can you guess what it is? The world. Yeah, I have had the worst string of luck trying to get this one particular game to work. I don't know what higher being decided they didn't want me to play this, but it seems like every time I try to run it, something disastrous happens. In my last video, you might remember my version of Sapphire Falls being turned into Haunted Island by an evil witch. Well, it got better. But I couldn't get it to start, no matter how many settings I tinkered with on my computer. So I eventually had to give up and go on some website called Amazon to find another one. I had to fork over a pretty penny for how much this game is honestly worth, which has honestly been a recurring issue with most of the edutainment games I've covered on this channel. Some of these second-hand sellers want me to hand over a Waverly Hills mansion in exchange for these super short, obscure computer games. When I saw that it was okay, I set it aside so I could work on my new Nick Arcade series. That kind of sent my channel down a Nickelodeon pipeline. When I was finally able to work on this video, I played the game for a bit, then I reached a certain point and it completely crashed. So I tried it a few more times, desperately trying to make the game work, but it would consistently reach the same part of the story and crash. So I was hopeless, and honestly kind of angry. My refund period had already expired by the time I knew the game was unplayable beyond that point. Lesson learned, always play a game in its entirety right away if you plan on making a video about it. Or do what I did next. Realizing there was no conventional way to play this in 2024, I had to consult some of my friends on the other side for a version that supposedly worked. And guess what? It didn't. It would install, the startup screen would come up, but as soon as I hit the button to begin, nothing. So this is kind of hopeless. Guess I won't be making a video on this after all. <laughs> Ow! Darn it, I just fixed that window. Hey, what's this? Hmm, I wonder who B is. Ah oh, well, this one probably works. I can tell because the paper told me it does. Now before we get to it, let's set the scene. Jumpstart has had some great classics over the years, and the Adventure series was a good concept. A bunch of games with more serious characters and storylines than the usual Jumpstart games. Mystery Mountain and Haunted Island were good, but we started having some issues when we reached Joe Hammett Kid Detective. Some of the minigames were really arduous, and others didn't provide you with the guidance necessary to complete them. The word edutainment is made up of educational and entertainment. If a minigame only consists of solving long division, then it's not entertainment. And if it doesn't teach you how long division works, it's not educational either. If you're already supposed to know the answers to all the questions in the minigames, what's the point of even playing? Just make a regular game at that point. But that aside, Joe Hammett had some good minigames, along with a cool story with memorable characters. But Mission EarthQuest had even more minigames that didn't guide you and focused less on developing the story and characters. With my memory of Sapphire Falls being hazy at best, I was a little apprehensive going into it. Regardless, the circle must be complete. Only after this can we say we've looked at the entire Jumpstart Adventure series. So without further delay, let's check out 4th Grade Sapphire Falls. In the opening cutscene, we're taken to a place called Sapphire Mines in the town Sapphire Falls. A tour guide is showing off a map that supposedly leads to a treasure, but some tunnels on it don't seem to exist. Meanwhile, someone who didn't want to pay for the tour is creepily watching them. It scares everyone away and steals the map with its super hairy arm. Then we're taken to the menu screen where the two main characters do a voiceover and tell us what to do. 
Welcome to your adventure journal. You can sign in by typing your name. Or just click on your name from the list. You can set difficulty levels for every subject they'll teach, then it's on with the game. Also, your menu is represented by a scrapbook that you'll use throughout it, so that's a clever addition. Once we're in, we get another cutscene. The hairy guy was apparently a monster and its invasion of the mine has become breaking news. So now we're introduced to our heroes, Sally and TJ. They also have a really small dog named Gizmo. Basically, TJ wants to see the monster, but Sally doesn't believe it exists. Also, look at the faces TJ makes throughout this cutscene. Get used to faces like that. This actually has very similar energy to Clue Finders, which was made by The Learning Company. It was a popular edutainment series in the 90s, so I wonder if Jumpstart took any inspiration from it. And geez, how tiny is Gizmo? Watch out for hawks. So Sally and TJ introduce themselves to Addie Wise, the tour guide. I love her stagnant face while she's being spoken to. But I just need to get a few pictures for my school paper. If I can get these photos, I'm sure to win the Junior Photojournalist of the Year award. Really, it won't take very long. When's the next tour? These pictures could make you famous. TJ wants to get a few pictures for his school paper so he can win an award. So there's your motivation. It's also worth mentioning that Sally is voiced by Kim My Guest, a highly popular voice actress with numerous credits to her name. She's probably best known for voicing Mei Ling in the Metal Gear series. TJ is voiced by Brianne Sadal, known for voicing numerous characters in Digimon. Jumpstart never pulled any punches when it came to getting a good voiceover cast. But anyway, now we're introduced to the toolbar. Here, we have access to all of our options. We can leave a minigame, get a hint, change the difficulty, get some tutoring, check our progress report, and play minigames directly. After the voice of Addie Wise tells us about this, we don't get to play just yet because the mayor jumps in to speak with us. We're then given dialogue options so you can ask him about the creature. This is similar to the format in Joe Hammett where you can branch the conversation off into different subjects. But this is a legitimate mystery game where the players will eventually have to solve the mystery for themselves, so it's important to pay attention. From a gameplay perspective, that's actually an improvement over Joe Hammett. That was literally about being a detective. But on the downside, the dialogue isn't as charming or witty as it was in Joe Hammett. I think they tried to keep the characters at least somewhat down to earth in this. You win some, you lose some. So this is basically how the game's format will work. You talk to a few suspects and pay attention to what they say. They'll give you some kind of motivation and mention certain aspects about themselves. For example, the mayor needs money to start a presidential campaign. He also mentions having a pocket watch, which could be a clue for later. Once you stop talking to him, he's added to your scrapbook as a suspect. You can also use this to revisit your conversation with the character at any point. That's very handy. But once this is done, we get a brief dialogue where TJ finds footprints. Then we can mess around with our tools. Check out this special pager we have. Welcome to the Jumpstart pager. Check here for special messages. Nah, I don't really care for special messages. So once we head into the mine, we're thrown into our first mini game, And just my luck, it involves math. You control Sally and you have to turn on lights so you can see through a tunnel. To do this, you solve a math problem by moving her to a switch on a platform and flipping it. The switch has to display the right answer. You climb ladders and jump over gaps, but to be honest, the controls are really slippery. You can't just run and keep going. Every time you press the arrow keys, Sally covers a set region of ground. If you try to hold the arrow keys down, you'll end up overshooting where you want to go. If you get an answer wrong, an electric current tries to shock you, so you have to duck. If you get hit, one of the lights goes out. If you get too many wrong, you get taken out of the mission and brought to a tutor screen. Now I criticize this in Mission EarthQuest, but this is actually sort of an improvement. I'd still prefer if they didn't interrupt the game to bring you to this, but the information is actually useful, and they explain how to solve certain math problems. This is far better than Mission EarthQuest just forcing you to solve a quiz question without teaching you anything or showing you how to solve the equation. This tells me that they knew Mission EarthQuest didn't have the greatest system in place, so they made an effort to fix it this time around. Good on you, Jumpstart. We'd love to see improvement. Wait, is that who I think it is? Oh no. It's Baldi. Gotta love edutainment games supporting each other. Whoa, what's happening? What's happening? Uh-oh. Okay then. That was weird. So now we're brought to the main hub where we'll spend most of the adventure. We have this big wall that has a bunch of indents for gemstones to go into. We also have three tunnels that lead to the gems we need to fill those holes with. You 
watched too many sci-fi flicks. But even the mayor said he believes in the creature. And politicians don't just make things up. Ah, uh, I can make so many potential jokes right now, but it's best if I hold my tongue on this. So once you choose a cave to search, you have to turn on the lights again. The problems can get more complicated to figure out, but again, the tutor is right there. Or you could be like me and look everything up. That works too. So one of the caves will take you to a geography game. Here, you fly around a map of the world and try to find the country that matches the fact listed at the top of the screen. You also avoid smoke and collect coal to keep yourself fueled. If you don't know the answer, you can just use the magnifying glass in the corner to learn about each possible country. And no, not every country is a selectable option. Only a few are, so that narrows it down a bit. Though it does make you wonder what the thought process behind choosing those particular countries was. But this is really fun and genuinely educational. I learned some facts about countries I didn't even know before. Then when you get enough gems to construct the big one, you fill in a slot on the wall and continue the process. Every so often, the lights will go out in a tunnel and you'll have to play the math game again. It isn't too common of an occurrence, though. Not to an annoying degree. Now for this vocabulary game, you have to circle the correct spelling of a word that Sally says. If you aren't paying close attention, you might not notice a subtle spelling difference. Or you'll select a different word that's said the same way. She got me with the word residence. It's very important to hear her use it in a sentence first. I will say, though, this electric fuzzball that destroys your line can be really annoying to work around. Still, this is really interesting. I like that you don't have to be too specific for the computer to comprehend what you're trying to do. I also like to get all squiggly with my circling, like making the staircase here. Or rather, should I say squaring instead of circling. And the last minigame is a tile-matching one, just like the one in Haunted Island. This was one of my favorites, so I'm glad to see they kept it in. You match tiles that either describe or show a picture of the same historical topic. Again, if you don't know the answer, you can use the magnifying glass to see a description on the tile. That's a really good detail. See, this is actually how you teach. The player is still doing the work, but the resources are provided for them to find out what they need to know. The player is taught the fact, then has the chance to use the knowledge to advance in the challenge. This is how edutainment should work, in my opinion. This is how you retain information. You don't just randomly guess until you see what works. If you do that, you'll forget it as soon as you don't need to know it anymore. I really like that they made an effort to educate here. Stuff like this goes a long way. Anyway, you keep playing these four minigames and you'll occasionally meet another suspect or get a cutscene. The next suspect we meet is Jillian Gonzalez, a geologist with a big ego. She hates the tourists and the miners, wishing she had cash to buy the mine so she could open it for scientists only. The other suspect is a miner named Jedediah Mason. He wants to buy the mine so he can continue his mining lifestyle. So that does it for all the suspects, but we also get cutscenes where we encounter the monster we're looking for. Gizmo really seems to hate it. Just make sure you don't accidentally click or hit a keyboard key because it'll skip the cutscene and there doesn't seem to be a way to go back and watch them again. And the process of searching for the gems seems like it would get repetitive. But actually, I felt like the developers knew exactly when to cut it. Sure, you do the same few missions five times each, but they aren't too hard and it feels like they go by quickly. They don't keep you glued to the computer for days on end playing the same thing endlessly. And when you finally do find all the gems, this happens. You know, the bottom has really fallen out on this adventure. Hey, was the monster just standing there and waiting for them to fall in? Maybe, actually. But they all tumble out and Gizmo rips off a piece of the monster's fur, which turns out to be a costume. TJ and Sally also landed on a conveniently placed hot air balloon. I assume it belonged to whoever's behind this, but it's never explained. So then we're brought to the next segment of this game. Weird music is playing that the characters keep reminding you of, but you fly the balloon to cave entrances to play one of two mini-games. You have to find clues to expose who's behind this whole mess. You might find a clue, but you might also end up just wasting your time. In one minigame, you have to drain a pool by linking pipes to a mechanism that'll flow the water out. You match words to their appropriate part of speech until you complete it. It's really easy. But the other one is more complicated. You control TJ and climb to a word that matches the description on the screen, such as a synonym, antonym, or homophone for a certain word. Falling frog! <sighs> hey, I didn't expect that. That was so unfair. This is easy in concept, but TJ climbs very slowly and the stage drags on for a really long time. It always sucks when you end up having to do this instead of the pipe one. But once you find all three clues, which are all you need to narrow down who the person behind the mystery is, you fly into the final cave and find the source of the music. 
You have to play this piano to open a door. You do this by hitting the correct key when a note moves across the screen. It isn't too hard once you get the hang of it. After a while, you start to learn where the keys are and you just end up hitting them because you recognize where the note is heading toward. So again, this is actually educational. I'm learning where piano keys are. This is also similar to a game in Haunted Island, but Quasimodo isn't here to tell us how great we are this time. Once you open the door, you head into a mine shaft. It wouldn't be a game about mines without a minecart chase. The monster is getting away in a cart when Gizmo jumps in to attack it. Now you have to chase the cart in one of your own. And that introduces the final mission. You move across tracks, avoid obstacles, and run over true or false options that match the statements at the top of the screen. These aren't just any statements, either. They're previous questions you had to answer over the course of your adventure. Now that's an appropriate way to end this. It's an actual review of everything you've learned. It seems like learning was a high priority when they made this. They really didn't want to squander the educational aspect. But once you beat this, you get a really goofy final cutscene. Hey, what's going on in there? So the monster is defeated and the treasure is found. Eddie Wise shows up and asks you who the monster really is. Not that it really matters since the monster is kind of caught anyway, but you check your notes and clues. Then you're able to make a guess. For the sake of replay value, it can be any of the three suspects. It can be different each time you play. That way you can't just solve the mystery once and do it all over again when you go back. Then in typical Jumpstart fashion, the game ends on a cliffhanger that would never be resolved in a sequel. TJ suspects there's more to investigate, and Gizmo finds a giant footprint. So that brings us to the end of Sapphire Falls. So, what do we think about it? Actually, it's kind of... good? I'm a little surprised to admit it, but I really enjoyed this one. Most of the games are actually fun, and there's an actual educational aspect to them. It never feels too hard or too repetitive. It cuts itself off before it ever reaches that point. It seems like the developers were aware of the weaker aspects in the older games, so they made an effort to fix them in this. It's genuinely impressive. At the same time, though, it isn't perfect. I feel like this concept needed more expansion. It does kind of feel like you only go to the same few areas and don't do a whole lot of exploring. I wish there was more sense of adventure. I feel like if this had more rooms to explore and more potential suspects, it would feel a lot more fleshed out. Also more shenanigans with your pursuit of the monster. I also thought the characters could have used more depth. Mystery Mountain, Haunted Island, and Joe Hammett had great casts filled with memorable personalities. Botley and Joe felt like actual friends. Flap felt like a kooky sidekick you weren't entirely sure if you trusted or not. Polly felt like a legitimate menace you wanted to serve justice to. And Miss Grunkle was like this creepy villain who filled you with fear whenever she came to antagonize you. TJ and Sally are just kinda kids. I feel like there's potential for a good dynamic between them, but this game feels like a chapter in a much bigger story. If this was just one episode in the adventures of Sally and TJ, I'd be fine with it. Other games could explore their personalities and expand on them. Kinda like how the Clue Finders games got increasingly deeper as they went along. Unfortunately, none of the Jumpstart Adventure games ever got any noteworthy expansion. Though there was a series where all the main characters, except Flap, came together in their own Justice League to fight bad guys. So maybe we'll check that out some other time. But aside from that, I do also wish there were more suspects to interview and investigate. But there is a Jumpstart series of detective games that can quench that interest if one desires to check it out. At the end of the day, Sapphire Falls isn't bad. Though I kind of wish it could coexist with Haunted Island rather than fully replace it. I think children could have fun with both of them. I think I prefer Haunted Island, though. Anyway, that wraps things up for this little mystery. Thank you for joining me. I will see you in the next memory.